Yes. Shall we start? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Let me start and introduce you and then uh, we will continue. Okay. Hey, hello everybody and welcome to Flow Coaching Institute's Flow Global Talks webinar series. Today I have a very special guest, Eli Abu Jadu. I hope I am reading your surname right, Eli. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I feel very honored because Eli uh, was uh, my student and then I got the chance to mentor him and he graduated from Flow Coaching Institute's business coaching certification program a year ago. And since then, uh, he has been integrating spiritual practices and mindfulness into his coaching practice. And I believe that in today's world, um, considering what's happening right now with so many things, like from Corona to like, you know, some conflicts in the world, we all need to learn about mindfulness. So um, Eli, uh, would you like to start? Of course, thank you, Talia, for this beautiful introduction. Um, so I'm ex very excited to be doing this webinar on mindfulness. I've been wanting to do it ever since I joined Flow as a student. Um, so let me tell you just briefly about myself. Um, I think I've always been a coach since I'm since I was 12. I've always had this huge passion for helping people and interested in learning about personal development. But I've been officially an ICF certified coach since a year now. And I'm currently working as a coach in the mining industry because I have a background in mining engineering. And uh, I've been going and doing trainings on mindfulness for mining employees because um, they go, they live in very remote conditions. So they live in northern parts of Canada and they have to go there and stay for a few days in a row and work long, work, long hours. Uh, so they need to learn how to relax. And uh, a lot of time they feel a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. So mindfulness has been very helpful for them. Um, so there's a lot of things I want to say about mindfulness, but since we have one hour today, um, I'm going to go over the basics. So first of all, I'm going to be explaining what mindfulness is, um, the attitudes of mindfulness, and then how they relate to the ICF competencies. And we'll get a chance to practice some mindfulness practices together, such as breathing meditations and body scan. And if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat box and at the end, uh, we'll address them. So let's start. So what is mindfulness? Um, the thing here is that we're always mindful of something. And mindfulness is synonym with awareness. We can be mindful of something that happened in the past. We can be mindful of what we're going to eat for dinner later tonight. We can be mindful of a task that we want to complete for our job. But in this context, in the, in the modern definition of mindfulness, it's we're being aware of the present moment, of the here and now. And People have been practicing mindfulness for over 3,500 years, and there exists a variety of techniques uh, related to mindfulness, and that brings the mind to the present moment and helps us focus, uh, such as breathing meditation, yoga, journaling, mindful walking, mindful eating, and even physical exercising. Uh, so basically, any, any kind of activities or tasks can be considered a mindfulness activity if we implement those seven attitudes. And those seven attitudes can also be incorporated during your coaching sessions. And so let's look at them one by one. So first of those attitudes is non-judgment. So let's say you're in a coaching session um, and the client is telling you some information that, you, that might, might shock you or it might be something totally out of your comfort zone. Uh, you're still keeping an open mind and you're not judging them. And in the same, whenever you're doing a mindfulness activity, such as meditation or, or journaling, whatever emotion or whatever content comes into your awareness, you're fully accepting it without any judgment. The second attitude of mindfulness is patience. Um, when you're using this attitude in your coaching session, you are patient with your client's progress. You're not trying to rush things and you're fully accepting where they are right now in the present moment. The third attitude of mindfulness, a beginner's mind. So when you're entering the coaching session with a beginner, beginner's mind, you're leaving all your assumptions behind and you're looking at your client from a new perspective. So every time you're meeting your client, 
you're seeing them as new and improved persons. The fourth attitude of mindfulness is trust. So you have full trust and full faith in your client's capability to attain their goal and live up to their full potential. The fifth attitude of mindfulness, non-striving. And that's kind of tricky because as coaches, we're usually striving. We're always setting goals into the future and we're always uh, looking forward to, to attain some, um, some objective with our clients. But non-striving in that sense, in the mindfulness sense, means that even though you're looking forward to the future, you're always managing to bring your client back to the present moment. And that's also one of your role as a coach, uh, to be able to fluctuate between where the client wishes to be and where they currently are right now. So it's all about accepting and embracing where your clients are in the present moment. Um, and, that and here we come to the sixth uh, attitude of mindfulness acceptance. Um, let's say you're doing a mindfulness meditation and uh, you're fully open and fully accepting to whatever experience and whatever content comes into your awareness and you're not trying to push anything away. And uh, in the same sense with your coaching clients, uh, you're fully accepting of whatever information is uh, given from the client into the session. And finally, letting go. Um, I love this attitude because when I first started coaching um, and I used to coach, when I first started coaching uh, clients, uh, I remember clients used to say something at the beginning of sessions and I used to hold on to that information, even though the client used to be, or used to, used to be in a different, totally different other topic. So this attitude is about letting go whatever information the client said and meeting them where they are. Um, and whenever we're embracing those seven attitudes, whether it's within our coaching sessions or within our mindfulness practices, uh, for example, meditation or exercising or journaling, uh, we're fully embracing the present moment and we're entering into this holistic experience um, where we feel an alignment between our mind and, and our mind and body and soul. We feel clarity in our own minds. We see opportunities that we haven't seen before. We feel that we're growing as people, we understand more, we feel more compassion, more empathy, we feel more focused. And last but not least, we do feel happy, but we feel spontaneous. So we're fully, we're fully in a state of flow and in a state of non-resistance. Because again, we're fully accepting whatever situation comes to us and um, we're keeping an open mind. And... Um, yeah, can I yeah. add something? Can I uh, like to the previous, you know, information, the previous slide, Eli? Can you come back? So uh, we, you know, we always talk about um, coaching presence, which is also one of the ICF competencies. And coaching presence is about attending the person that you're coaching, coaching with full presence and it's about like you know witnessing the person's process um with a neutral state and um from just these two you know uh slides and and the information that you shared it comes to me that you know it really and uh, practicing mindfulness is really useful in developing that you know powerful coaching presence with and neutral state of mind. Um, do you agree? Like, does it help you or support you um, when you're coaching? Oh, definitely, Talia, of course, of course. And that's something also that the client noticed whenever you're present or not. Because um, presence is not only, it, it's definitely an state of mind, but something that you also embrace in your body language. So are you fully engaged with your client using your body? Are you uh, also using your tone of voice to, to, to make your client feel that as if you're fully present and engaged into the conversation? So of course, uh, the, the whole point of mindfulness is to learn how to be present in the moment and, fully, and also be present with our client and, and helping our clients also live that experience of body, mind, soul alignment and feeling as they're a clarity and they feel that they're meeting with opportunities. Thank you, Talia, for your insight. So when, when we're in the present moment, so what is in the present moment? This is such a big concept that there's so many books and so many articles that have been, that wrote about the present moment. 
But uh, here we're going to talk about two types of events that happen in the present moment. So there's external events, for example, objects in your environment, uh, people, the way people behave, the way people talk, uh, what, whatever people are doing. And then there's events happening in your inner world. So there's the external environment and then there, there's your inner environment. There's some, uh, okay. Um, and mindfulness can be used as, uh, as an inquiry tool. So to be able to notice something in your environment or within yourself as a management tool. So once you're aware of that event, you can choose to engage in it and choose to use it either to uh, maybe um, transcend it. Let's say it's an emotion. Maybe you're aware of that emotion but then you can use uh, mindfulness to manage that emotion and transcend it into something more positive. And it can also be used as a decision-making tool. So once you're aware of that emotion, once you use it and you engage in it, you can use that emotion to make decisions. And uh, we're gonna now uh, see one very simple inquiry tool uh, into our inner world. Uh, and you can try it. If you're at home, you're at work, uh, you can uh, ask yourself, what am I feeling in this, uh, in this particular area of my inner world? So the inner world is uh, comprised of different layers. So first of all, there's the physical body and sensation. These are your skin, your organs, your posture, your joints. So whatever sensation you're feeling inside your own body. And then a little layer just underneath are your emotions. So you're my, you might be feeling sad, you might be feeling happy, anxious, excited, and there exists a dozens of emotions. Jealousy is another example, anger, um, happiness. This is one of uh, the most uh, popular emotion. So ask yourself uh, very briefly, what am I feeling right now in my physical body? You can just name maybe one sensation. You can write it down, you can say it in your own mind, or you can say it out loud if you're at home. Um, and then what am I feeling? What am I feeling? What kind of emotion is present in my own organism? And just underneath the emotions are, is your intuition. So intuition comes usually as a gut feeling. It's a more subtle feeling than an emotion. And usually when we leave that ignore, it develops into something more prominent, like an emotion or a body sensation. And usually our intuition tells us something about our needs. So what, what do we feel that we currently need right now? And ask yourself right now, what do I need in this present moment? Do I need, do I feel hungry? Does, this is a physiological need. Or do I feel the need to be loved? Do I feel the need to see my friends? Do I feel the need to engage in my work? So what is the, your current need right now? And usually our needs are shaped by our values and our motivation. What is, what is important to me? What am I motivated about right now? What am I aiming? What is my objective? So ask yourself right now in this moment, what is important to me? What do I need to achieve? What, what do I need to prove to myself? And again, your core values and your motivations are shaped by your self-identity, uh, which is heavily influenced by your culture, your own experiences, uh, your own beliefs. And um, if you're a coach and you're watching this webinar, um, for the self-identity area, you can ask yourself, who am I as a coach today and right now? Where do I see myself being as a coach in a few years based on who I am right now in this present moment? And the thing about our inner world is that it's constantly changing. It's, it's dynamic. It's, never, it's not static. And that's why it's very important to always check within ourselves what is, what is happening into our inner world because whatever we felt yesterday in our own body and our emotions or our needs or our, even our self-identity might not be necessarily the same two hours later or the next day. So it's always important to always keep ourselves in check and see what's going on inside so we can make better decisions in the future and uh, we can live life more authentically and be in a better state of flow. Um, Eli, uh -huh. I have a suggestion. Can you come to like, you know, so um, shall we um, practice this all together right now? Uh, okay. And if you want, I can lead that. I can facilitate that. So of course can, not. You, yeah. So um, you can, you know, if you have any questions or comments, um, you can uh, write them, type them in the chat box. Um, and, but I just want to try all together, like, while well, you know, everybody is here. Uh, because this is a practice. I have a sense that, you know, um, builds so much awareness and insight about uh, where we are 
and who we are and how do we feel in the present moment. And a lot of people are having difficulty in keeping their attention in the present moment because the way our brain designed is either we go like backward and think about our past and you know so many things or just you know worry about the future or just plan ahead the future so that's where we are that's how our brain is designed but this simple exercise uh, seems like it can help us to connect with ourselves we uh, build that connection with ourselves in the moment so um shall we give it a try like you know i can yeah okay yes. so all together um let's just you know focus on our body and our body sensations sensations like you know some kind of um maybe um skin uh senses sensations or um, warmth in your body, whatever it is. And just you know, ask your body and ask your senses like, how am I today in this moment right now? And try to like sense and feel, maybe there's some tingling, maybe there's some like relaxation, maybe some breathing. Pay attention to your breathing and just ask yourself, how am I connected to my body right now in this moment? And what do I feel? And then come into your emotions. Just, you know, ask yourself, Let's ask all together, how am I feeling today? Right now, in the moment. What do I feel today, right now, in the moment? Do I feel excited? Do I feel love? Do I feel enthusiasm? Do I feel some resentment? What do I feel right now? And how would I describe those feelings as emotions? And then if you want, you can just put your right or left hand, non-dominant hand uh, on your belly, on your gut and ask yourself, What, do, what does my intuition tell me right now? Maybe you hear a soft whispering or maybe you have a sensation in your belly. Maybe you see an image. These are all artifacts of your intuition. A soft whisper, an image. A sensation in your body. So what does your intuition try to bring to your attention right now in the moment? Just ask yourself. And then as for the next, you know, inquiry, Let's keep it broad and see what your subconscious will tell you. What do I need right now? Sound is gone. Can you hear me? David says sound is gone. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you pretty well. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I think. David is having a problem to hear me, so. And then coming to your values and your motivation. Just ask yourself, what is important to me? And what do I want to practice right now? 
like you might like to practice one of your values, for example, creativity, or you might like to practice one of your values, maybe freedom, maybe something else, or maybe fun, or maybe learning is a value for you and you're already practicing it right now in the moment. So what do I want to practice as a value right now is a question that you can ask yourself. Sharing might be a value for you. Really ask yourself because values are so important to our intrinsic motivation. They really fuel us and help us to get energized and take action. And then ask yourself, what am I motivated about right now in the moment in the presence of these people. What is my motivation right now in this instance, in the presence of these people? And then ask yourself, and I will keep this question broad also, as I am doing this mindfulness practice, mindfulness exercise with these wonderful people, who am I becoming? If you want, you can add a role like who am I becoming as a coach? Who am I becoming as a mother? Who am I becoming as a leader? Whatever role that you would like to focus on, but I'm keeping it broad right now. So as I am practicing this mindfulness exercise with you, who am I becoming? And what am I experiencing? in the presence of these people together with this energy and the collective subconscious that we share through this webinar. So you might be noticing some sensations right now. You might be noticing some um, feelings, some sort of relaxation, relaxation, some sort of energy. Just note them down. Like write them down if you have a pen and notepad. And you can also type them in the chat box if you, if you are experiencing a specific feeling, emotion, sensation, or any image that is coming to you, a word that might, you might be hearing. Thank you. Ashna, just, you know, type it in the chat box. If it is blank, that's okay too. If you don't feel anything, that's okay too. But what we are doing right now, we are awakening our sensations, our emotions, our intuitions, and our whole awareness to pay attention to the present moment, which is the definition of mindfulness. So thank you, Eli, for this opportunity. Over to you. Well, thanks to you, Talia. That was very relaxing and very amazing. <laughs> Your voice is very soothing. Thank you. My pleasure. So let's continue in our presentation. So as you know, I'm an engineer and um, I usually like to validate scientifically um, whatever terminology or concept I, I learn. Um, and in terms of mindfulness, there's over 4,000 research papers that have been written and researched on this topic. And 
there's physical, emotional, and psychological benefits that have been proven. And um, one very simple example, it has been shown that those who, that those who practice regularly mindfulness um, have an increased cognitivity in their neurons in their brain, as you can see in those two scans. So the first scan on the left is the brain before mindfulness, and the, and the scan on the right is the brain after mindfulness. So you see there's more connectivity in the brain. Um, and and uh, mindfulness has been uh, researched in various fields such as medicine, teaching, government, politics, um, and coaching as well, of course. There's many uh, text and research papers that have been uh, that have been written on mindfulness and coaching. So you can feel free to take a picture of um, of the screen. Those are only four papers that I love and I, and I truly enjoy reading. But if you go on Google Scholar, you'll find tons and tons of papers that have been written on mindfulness and coaching. However, in our context, we're focused on ICF coaching. You know, because we're focused on ICF coaching. And ICF is the International Coach Federation, if you don't know about it. And this is the, the highest and most pre prestigious body, organ, uh, body of organization for coaching. Um, and um, Flow is accredited and certified by ICF since the beginning. So whenever you take a Flow coaching program, you're going to be certified by ICF. And uh, ICF has 11 coaching competencies. And um, just one moment. Sorry, I had something on my screen. Uh, so those 11 um, ICF coaching competencies, they are learned throughout the flow programs, whether it's the core foundation, life coaching, or business coaching program. Um, and those 11 are, first of all, meeting ethical guidelines and professional standards. So keeping your session in full confidentiality. Uh, establishing the coaching agreement, so explaining to your client what coaching is and what coaching is not and what and the logistics of your sessions. Um, if you wish to know more about it, by the way, you can go on the Coach Federation sites. Uh, they explain really in detail each of those competencies, but here I'm giving a, a brief overview of them. Uh, third, establishing trust and intimacy with the clients. There's then there's coaching presence, active listening, powerful questioning, direct communication, creating awareness, designing actions, planning and goal setting, and managing progress and accountability. Because we only have one hour, we're gonna look at uh, one of those competencies in details in a few slides and how it relates to mindfulness. And we're gonna focus on coaching presence. Uh, but before we go into that, uh, so these are the 11 ICF coaching competencies. So let's look at the mindfulness competencies. So remember at the beginning, we said that mindfulness can be used as an inquiry tool. It can be used as a management tool or a decision-making tool. And uh, those two, with, with the help of those tools, you're able to develop uh, a set of mindfulness competencies. So for the inquiry tool, you'll be able to develop a deeper sense of self-awareness and a deeper sense of social awareness. So you're aware of your emotions and your own inner world, but you're able as well to empathize, empathize with clients and with other people regarding their own emotions and their own inner world. And when you use mindfulness as a management tool, so being aware of those emotions and, trend, and, and managing those emotions, uh, you develop the competencies of self-regulation, so you're able to manage and regulate whatever goes on into your dynamic inner world. And when you use that management tool with other people, for example, your clients, uh, you develop the competency of effective communication because you're using verbal communication to help other people manage their own emotions. And finally, when mindfulness is used as a decision-making tool, so taking an, taking an emotion or certain uh, psychological characteristics and making a decision out of it, you develop the competency of responsible decision-making. And uh, all those competencies are, can, are used interchangeably in each of the 11 ICF competencies. So let's take a closer look at, um, at coaching presence, which is the fourth ICF competency. And uh, this image, I took it from the Coach Federation website. So it explains really in depth what this competency is about. So coaching presence is the ability to be fully conscious and create spontaneous relationship with the client employing a style that is open, flexible, and confident. If we, took a, if we take an example at uh, number one, 
w- w- being c- present in coaching implies that you are present and flexible during the coaching process, dancing in the moment. So it requires you to be able to be present and that requires the competency of self-awareness, which is developed using the mindfulness, which is developed using an inquiry mindfulness tool. Uh, Second of all, uh, you're able to access your own intuition and uh, trust your own inner knowing going with the gut and that requires the competency of self-regulation. So not only you're aware of your intuition, but you're able to manage that intuition and use it into your own sessions. Um, another example in the, in the fourth point, so, um, so you're seeing many ways to work with the client and choose in the moment what is most affecting. So you're making a decision to really, um, to really choose the word that will resonate best with your clients and that requires responsible decision making. So you're not only aware of your client's emotion and aware of, and of, aware of what is happening in the session, but you're using them to make the most effective decision with your clients. And uh, finally, number seven, um, by the way, in all those points, you can find different, uh, interchangeably different mindfulness, uh, mindfulness competencies, but I chose those four ones because they're the most obvious ones. So the seventh uh, point, um, when you're present in your coaching sessions, you're able to demonstrate confidence in working with strong emotions and can self-manage and not be overpowered or enmeshed by clients' emotions. And that requires the competencies of social awareness. So being aware of your client's emotion and also uh, manage those emotions through effective communications. And during the flow coaching program, so um, uh, we definitely teach the STAR model, which is uh, awareness, motivation, um, um, creative planning, success and achievement, and focus. And during the program, we teach students a variety of tools. And and those can be also considered as mindfulness tools. So those tools are, those tools related to inquiry, management, and decision makings. Uh, such as active listening and direct communication techniques, which we teach at the beginning of the program. Uh, There's also another uh, tool that we used, an inquiry tool, which is very similar to what we experienced at the the beginning of this webinar with Talia, uh, the the motivational levels of changes. Um, And this tool is uh, about helping your client understand what is their vision, their identity, their skills, their feelings, and and concrete actions to get to that vision. And there's also another tool called the Weed of Life, which helps the clients raise awareness over which area in their life they wanna work on and focus during their coaching sessions. Uh, another inquiry tool for, the, for, the co- for coaches is establishing a coaching agreement. So we help coaches better understand who they, whom they identify themselves as coaches and uh, what are the characteristics of their own coaching sessions and the logistics they want to use with their clients. So for example, how many coaching sessions they want to use with their clients, how they're going to proceed, what is the time that they're going to use, how much uh, they're going to charge. So it's really about building that coaching identity. Um, Another tool that we use, well, it's not necessarily a tool, but it's a model, the flow model. Um, And this is all about being fully present into the moment and uh, being fully creative. And we, t- and we also teach different state of minds um, and how to help your clients achieve a state of flow. And um, also another type of tool that we teach during our program is creative questioning, how to ask the most efficient and creative question to get the best results and the best potential out of your clients. Talia, would you like to add something regarding? Yeah, of course. Um, so, um... It is really about like, you know, um, the five step star model, starting with awareness and then moving towards motivation, then creative planning, then achievement, then focus is the last step of the star model is really uh, about creating awareness at each step um, for the whole person not only on the mental level, not only on uh, emotional level or um, spiritual level or relational level, but really where the person is, including the coach himself or herself, um, on all of those levels and, and what is the real potential. 
on all levels for the individual, for the person, including the coach. You know, as coaches, uh, we have to, I'm not saying that uh, we do, but we have to uh, build self-awareness for ourselves and really work on like reflecting about all of those levels I just summarized on a regular basis because um, each of those coaching conversations that we have with our clients triggers something, stimulates something, and um, it gives us an opportunity to process and, and also um, become aware of new things uh, that have been uh, just, you know, sitting there in our subconscious. And then with that revealed information, we can even become more mindful and grow every day. So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, um, we teach these uh, tools, processes, principles, and understanding, not only for skill development, but also for the coach to use to develop their own mindfulness uh, so that they're aware of where they are uh, on each level. Thank you, Eli. That's what I want to say. Yeah, definitely. And I want to add, Taya, that definitely taking this program, um, it's a journey of self-development for the students and for the coaches themselves. And um, a lot of students who have been through the 15 weeks of taking this program, uh, whenever they, they finish and they get certified, they feel like totally new and improved versions of themselves. And this is something I experienced myself because once when you're learning how to use those tools during the, the, the program, how to use them with your clients, you also get an opportunity to use them on yourself. So, uh, and also it will impact many aspects of your personal and professional lives because when you learn how to actively listen or how to communicate effectively, it's not only about applying it in your coaching session, but you start applying it in every level in your life, with your friends, with your family, with your coworkers. Or another example, when, you, when we use the wheel of life in, uh, during the program and we teach you how to use it with your clients, you also uh, become more aware of which areas in your own life need more focus and you wanna, fo and you wanna work on and to get your best potential. So at the end, it's really, as well a, a journey of self-development for the students and for the coaches. And also, I just wanna add to my, one more thing. Like we really learn listening, you know, on a deeper level. And I believe that, you know, we also not uh, only teach like listening with our ears, but also uh, listening and observing uh, the whole person, not only the words, but the whole person that also uh, in time develops uh, connectiveness uh, to your own sense senses as a coach. So I think uh, practicing those skills really help um, to develop your own mindfulness in that you know uh, sense. That's uh, how I see it after learning uh, what it is you know from you in this webinar. Definitely. It's, it's body, mind, soul presence. <laughs> in the yeah, way we're... I can see that. Yeah, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, the last part of the STAR model is focus. And um, one of your role as coaches is to help your client manage progress and stay focused. So whenever you agree on a plan, on, a, an, on an action plan, on, an, on certain goals that the client can take, for example, in between session, uh, you can help your client become more mindful of possible sources of distraction, because once your client leaves the coaching session, they go back to reality. There's uh, so many things that can happen in their personal and professional lives. And you wanna help your client really develop the skills to really manage those sources of distraction and conflicts that can happen in their lives and that can distract them from their goals. Uh, and so you wanna also discuss ways for them to maintain focus. So if they know that, uh, having their phone next to them while doing a certain task or certain goal will distract them. Maybe putting, them, putting it away will help them stay more focused. Um, you want to also help them manage potential conflicts and ways to stay resilient. Uh, maybe discuss also certain scenarios of uh, conflicts that can happen and how they can manage emotions that can arise in them whenever that conflict uh, comes into their lives. Uh, 
Uh, you can also discuss activities to help them stay grounded. Uh, what kind of activities does your client like doing? Do they like exercising? Do they, are they more into yoga, into meditation? Um, how to implement that into the action plan so they can really stay present and grounded and um, also focused because the whole point of this is to stay focused. And finally, activities that foster their body, mind, soul, wellness and their own well, their general well-being. You might, your client might have the best action plan, the best goals, but it, if they don't feel really good within themselves, um, it's going to inhibit their capacity to really achieve that goal. So you want to make sure that your client feels good from the inside as well. And uh, examples of activities that you can discuss with your clients, uh, again, is the same, similar activities to what can help them stay grounded, um, maybe going out with friends, things that make them feel good, you know, having fun, uh, going out for walks, um, doing going to restaurants, seeing their partner. So any kind of activities that your, your client have discussed in the past that make them feel good within themselves, uh, you can bring it into that uh, focused discussion whenever you're discussing an action plan and their goals. So now we're gonna, um, I'm gonna discuss two mindfulness practice uh, for inquiry and, and self-management. Um, so the, there's two, there's the body scan meditation and breathing meditation. The body scan, I'm just going to explain it briefly, but then the second one, which is the breathing meditation, we're going to get to practice it as a group. Um, the body scan meditation is very, it's a very simple practice, which allows you to be aware of the different areas of your body. And how you can, and how you can try it at home is simply you can lie down or either sit down comfortably on a chair. And, uh, st and starting with your toes, ask yourself, so what am I feeling in this area of my body? And then you slowly go up little by little. So then you go into your calves, your knees, your thighs, your pelvis, your abdomen, your chest, your arms, your neck, your head. So little by little in every area of your body, simply recognize what are the sources of discomfort and pain, or maybe the sources of pleasure that you're feeling. And this allows you to, to uh, strengthen the connection that you have your body and also be aware of sensation that requires special attention. And um, why it's very important to also focus on the body is because a lot of the time we're on a mental level, we're thinking, we're analyzing, we're judging, and we're not necessarily ground into, grounded into our own bodies. So bringing your focus back into your bodies is about um, developing that mind and body connection and also being aware of any sensation and emotion that is present, but we're, that, that we were unconscious of. And then there's the breathing meditation, which we're gonna practice it together. Uh, this practice is about bringing awareness to your breasts. And, um, and as you know, your breast is not something that you consciously control, whether or not during the day, you can always stop and see for yourself that you've been breathing unconsciously that you were not aware of. Uh, and the breast is like the heart. It beats natu like the heart beats naturally. It's an automated body mechanism, which is out of our own control. And it's the same with our breasts. And when we learn to really observe that natural wave of inhaling and exhaling, it promotes a mental re relaxation and equanimity. So you feel relaxed, you feel zen, uh, you feel good. And um, it's a good way also to release anxiety and any stress present into our own minds and body. And just um, for the logistics of this practice, there are three important things to consider. So first of all, your posture. Uh, because the body is constantly circulating, there's blood circulating, there's energy circulating. So you want to make sure that there's a natural flow of energy in your body. And that's why it's so important to keep a natural posture. So make sure that your shoulders are relaxed. And uh, you can try it right now. If you're at home, at work, if you're sitting on a chair, uh, make sure that your two feet are on the floor because we're going to practice it in a few instances. So your two feet are grounded on the floor. Your shoulders are very well relaxed and you're and your spine is aligned. Um, and if you, if you notice yourself straining, uh, really make sure to release that strain or that tension in your body. Feel, you have to sit, feel, make sure that you're sitting very well comfortably. Uh, the second thing to consider during this practice is your breasts. Uh, when we're gonna try this practice in a few instances, uh, try not to 
control your breath. Simply observe it. You're going to see that uh, your body is breathing naturally without, your, without you having to make an effort. Um, and uh, third of all, your awareness. So whenever you, you're putting your focus in your breath, it's natural that the mind will want to wander away and think about events that are going to happen into the, day, into the rest of your day or things that happened in the past. But your goal here is to bring your focus again and again and again to your breathing. And if, if you've noticed your mind wandering so many times, don't judge yourself. Uh, be gentle with yourself. Uh, simply bring your focus back to your breath. And, um, and with practice, you'll be able to really just maintain full focus uh, into it. And this exercise can be done in two to five minutes. You can do it uh, at home whenever you're taking a break at work. So it's very easy to incorporate it during your days. I do usually do it when, I, when I'm driving, uh, it's be, uh, before driving to work. And uh, it's usually very helpful to, to, for me to relax and release any source of anxiety. So let's try it. So make sure that you're sitting comfortably and you can either choose to close your eyes or keep your eyes open, but I recommend keeping your eyes closed to avoid any sources of the distraction in your outer environment. And we're going to try it for one minute, one, or two, one to two minutes. So I suggest placing your hands on your belly. Um, so now that you're sitting comfortably, start by taking one deep inhalation. And that's a conscious inhalation. So really feel your body and your belly expanding to the full capacity. Keep it for a few seconds. In. and then release it from your mouth. Now again, you're gonna breathe in through your nose. And exhale from your mouth. And now let go of the tendency to control your breath. Really simply observe your body breathes in and out naturally. Notice the sensations on your hand of your belly slowly expanding and releasing. If you feel that you're not present, you're not grounded, you can bring your awareness to the sensation of your feet on the ground. Also the sensation of your chair on your legs. If you feel yourself trying to control your breath, simply let go of this tendency and simply observe. So the goal here is to bring our focus back again and again and again to our breathing. So now we're gonna take a final deep inhalation through your nose. Feel your belly expanding. And now when you're releasing, feel your whole body melting. And all the tension going away. And whenever you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes. And stay with whatever feeling you're experiencing right now. If you're feeling relaxed, if you're feeling uh, comfortable, stay with that feeling. On the other hand, if you're feeling anxious, you're feeling stressed, uh, try to stay in that observing mode. Simply notice it and try not to judge it or keep it away. So we have uh, one person who wrote in the chat. 
I feel so relaxed. relaxed. <laughs> yeah, I feel so relaxed. It's so good. So we're, we're almost near the end of our webinar. Um, I'm going to give you some mindfulness tips uh, to manage inner conflicts during sessions. Um, and I got inspired by this because uh, when a lot of students, when they start the program, um, they, because the program incorporates a lot of practice. So each week students are paired up with other students to practice coaching and practice the tools that are learned during the classes. And, uh, and students experience uh, types of coaching that they were not used before. For example, some students who are more specialized in uh, spiritual coaching might come across um, situation that involves relationships or finances or family or parenting. So they get in, so the goal of this, these exercises and this practice is to expand your comfort zones. And a lot of times students kind of, some students panic and they're not sure what to do, what to ask, how, how to manage things. So those tips are, are meant for students to help them manage those inner conflicts during sessions. Um, so first of all, so if, uh, if some, if it's some, if your body practice or client says something that arri makes, arises some emotions or some feelings inside your own organism or your own body, uh, if it's relevant to the session, you can always address it to your clients using, uh, verbal softeners. Uh, for example, um, you can, you can say something to your client. Um, I'm noticing this certain feeling in my body. Do you mind if I share it with you? Uh, I am curious to know if you're feeling that way as well. So using verbal softener to really uh, allow your, to really ask your client if they allow you to really share that deep feeling, that emotion with them. Um, again, also another type of situation that can happen during your session is that your client might be talking and sharing their own experiences, but your thoughts might be drifting away. You might be thinking about something totally unrelevant to the session. Uh, and a good way to ground yourself is to uh, feel, well, first of all, notice that your thoughts are drifting and then bring back um, your awareness to the sensation on your feet on the ground and notice your sensation in your body and your posture. Um, a lot of time when the thoughts are drifting, we're not necessarily aware of how we're positioning ourselves. So really bring yourself to a posture where the client uh, might experience from you as a coach, this full body, mind and soul presence. And again, uh, let's say you've, you've experienced something before the session that was very emotionally overwhelming, something in your personal life, uh, and it gets and um, it manifests into the session, um, simply take a few breaths, notice that overwhelming energy, and uh, you can always wait after the session to address that emotion within yourself. And of course, if it's something very urgent, if you feel that, uh, if you feel a deep sensation in your body and you feel that you can continue the session uh, and there's an emergency situation, of course, you can always ask your client permission um, to, to maybe postpone it, but it never happens. It never happened to anyone that it I know. It never happens, yeah. <laughs> it never happens. <laughs> but usually try to wait until the end of the session to really manage that if overwhelming feeling within yourself and bring your focus back to your client and stay present. Um, there's a- Yeah, can I add one more thing to that, you know, slide? Okay. So, okay. Um, you know, as we are listening, um, to you know individuals um, other individuals uh, we are present and and we know that you know at flow coaching in our model we teach that everybody is unique and we respect their uniqueness and unique qualities and sometimes when we are listening um, what they share with us may trigger something that we suppress and I have a funny example, like one of uh, my students that I was mentoring a, a few years ago, uh, brought a session recording to me. And the session, in the session, the client was repeating uh, his difficulty about anger management. And uh, the coach that I was mentoring didn't ask anything about the anger, you know, that specific feeling. And after I listened to the session, I said, why didn't you ask? 
about anger. He said, I have it too. <laughs> so I was afraid that I would lose my control. And we laughed, of course. But, you know, uh, being aware and processing your own emotions. And if you're already aware that you have a similar issue and uh, you, you mention it, you express it, you process it, then it becomes manageable for you. And the trigger will be different. You will just be aware of it in the session when your client is mentioning about it. And then you will just be aware and then you will let go. If you process it, then it will become manageable. So anything that is processed is manageable. Anything that is suppressed becomes a saboteur. So mindfulness can be a way for us to process those suppressed you know, emotions that are not functional for us um, with a gentle and compassionate way. So that's how I you know, see uh, also one of the benefits of mindfulness for us as coaches. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't agree I hope more. it makes sense. It does definitely tell you, and I couldn't agree more. And definitely, you know, the regular practice of mindfulness, for example, breathing meditation or deep body scan, uh, will help you develop those competencies that we discussed earlier, and those competencies of self-management, self-awareness. Um, and that will help you, of course, manage those overwhelming emotions and those triggers that can potentially happen during a session and manage them in a more efficient, in a more efficient way, in a sense that it won't affect the way you coach your clients. Thank you, Todd. My pleasure. Uh, so I have a few book reading recommendations about mindfulness, but there exist hundreds of them. Um, I shared some of my few, few of my favorites. Uh, the first one is self-knowledge, which is um, more of uh, an inquiry tool into your self-identity, your emotions, your values. Um, so it's, it's very similar to what we've done at the beginning. So it's really questions and practices to really understand what goes on into your inner world. But then if you want something more um, uh, conventional, you know, conventional mindfulness practices, uh, Teach Nat Han wrote so many books um, about mindful eating, mindful practices, mindful yoga. So feel free to check them out. Uh, if you want something more scientific, more uh, related to coaching and uh, the coaching profession, there's this book called Mindful Coaching, How Mindfulness Can Transform Coaching Practice. And another book called Mindfulness and Psychotherapy. I know psychotherapy is, is different than coaching, but uh, they're both relation, relational and support professions. So there's very, a lot of similarities as well. And there's, also, of course, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, which is a very, very famous book. And uh, finally, uh, John Kabat-Zinn, he's the creator of the mindfulness-based uh, stress reduction program. It's an eight-week program, which I took last fall and has been very transformative and very helpful in learning how to manage stress and anxiety and different kind of a physical sensation. Uh, so John Kabat-Zinn is really a leader in uh, mindfulness teaching. So you may want to check him out as well. Taya, would you uh, like to take on that part? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so I will be very quick. Um, if you're interested, um, I know there are coaches already in the call and there are, you know, uh, alumni. But if you are interested in becoming a certified uh, ICF certified professional coach and learn about more like, you know, flow model methodologies and positive psychology, of course, these are our upcoming programs, um, March 11, March 12th and April 15th. Um, so, um, if you would like to inquire more about these ICF certification programs, please contact us through info at flowcoachinginstitute.com or call us at uh, the numbers that you see on the screen uh, below. Yes, we can move on because I really want to have a QA, and a you know, uh, session as well. Yeah. So uh, definitely feel free to, well, now we have some time for questions. If you have questions, please feel free to write them in the chats. Um, so we have a few minutes for that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I had a question um, while people are thinking about, you know, their questions maybe. Um, so um, I meditate, you know, and, and before there was the term mindfulness, before John Kabat-Zinn, there was Zen Buddhism and meditation and, you know, um, and all of those like energy healing, you know, practices and everything. Um, how is it different than, you know, meditating? How mindfulness is different than meditating? Well, uh, meditation is a mindfulness practice. Well, as, as we've said at the beginning, mindfulness can, is, can imperate a variety of practices. So if you're doing, for example, the dishes and you're in corporate, that's a very silly example, but let's say you're doing the dishes, but you're fully embracing the seven attitudes of non-judgment, of acceptance, of patience, beginner's mind, while doing that activity, that can be considered a mindfulness activity because you're fully drawn into the moment, you're fully drawn into the task at hand, and you're fully present. Uh, but meditation is another example of a mindfulness practice. And um, so meditation yeah. is a way to uh, increase your mindfulness uh, ability. Is that correct if I say it? Definitely, definitely. And I, and I want to say also meditation is the most direct way to coming into in contact with your inner world mm -hmm. and close yourself from potential distraction in the environment. So it's a really one-on-one -on -one connection with yourself, a very direct connection with yourself. And of course, I, I, I meditate every day. I meditate, uh, it's been seven years I've been meditating day, daily. And for me, it's the most effective way to really get in touch with whatever feeling or sensation is present in my mind. And processing also. And processing as well, yes. Yeah we, yeah, we have one question, like how long did it take you to go from zero to the level of mindfulness you are in at this point? And how long should one expect, you know? Um, so I heard that you are meditating for seven years. So obviously it helped, but how long is there a time frame or, you know, um, anything that you would like to advise? Definitely, and I get that a lot. Uh, I know a lot of people that get very discouraged when they first try meditation because they're not, because they, they notice that their mind is not able to stay focused on on something specific their mind is always wandering in so many different directions and that's normal because even me you know like i've been meditating for seven years and i can sometimes find myself where my mind is in a constant shadow mode it's thinking about the past worrying about the future it is thinking about so many thoughts at the same time so if you've been going for 20 years 20 30 40 years without ever meditating uh you might be used to having that uh, used to that constant mental chatter. And when you finally sit down and learn how to quiet your mind, uh, it might be a strange and, and uh, uncomfortable uh, experience at first. But how long someone can expect uh, really depends. It's subjective. There's no specific time uh, for one to be able to get to a, a clear mindfulness state of mind where there's no thoughts at all. Um, but one final advice is that whenever you're practicing, if you're new to mindfulness and you're new to um, mindfulness meditation, um, whenever you notice your thoughts coming into your own awareness or you feel that your thoughts are drifting away, don't judge yourself. Um, don't judge your thoughts. Simply let them in because that's normal. The mind is a thinking mind. Um, so be gentle, be patient with yourself. Remember the seven attitudes. Those seven attitudes that we spoken at the beginning, you want to apply them during your meditation practice. And those are skills that can be strengthened over time. Mm -hmm. So don't give up if you find yourself first meditating and having your thoughts driven everywhere. This is something normal that most people, the majority of people experience when they first start meditating. But remember, it, be patient. Uh, be accepting and not judging of those emotions or thoughts that might come into your own awareness. Yeah, we have another question, Eli. Uh, what is the star model again uh, from Joycelyn Morris? Uh, the star model? Okay, so the star model is a, a five-step model. There's awareness, there's motivation, there's creative planning, success and achievement, and finally focus. And we usually, you, we learn, we usually use that structure in our coaching sessions uh, in the full program. Well, yeah, it's, so uh, star, star model, just following up, like adding to what Eli uh, already summarized very well, 
is um, our methodology, flow coaching methodology that we use, flow coaches use, when we are coaching our clients in our sessions. Mm -hmm. And in each part of the model, we also teach some tools. So there's tools that we're going to teach to help gain more awareness. Then there's tools that we're going to teach to gain more motivation, tools for creative planning, tools for success and achievement, and tools for focus. So each, of, each part of the STAR models has specific tools that we teach in the program. Thank you for the question. So are there any other questions? Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I realize that we are over time. So five minutes pass already. So do you have any questions? If you have any questions, please type them you know, in the chat box or uh, Q&A part, and we're happy to answer your questions. If not, uh, then I suggest that we end the webinar here. Okay, let's for a few seconds and see. Okay, um, I think we are done. Uh, so Eli, thank you very much. It has been very useful and also very inspirational. And I really enjoyed it. And uh, I hope that, you know, um, people in the webinar also uh, learned and inspired to integrate, you know, mindfulness into their coaching practice or maybe into their daily lives. So thank you very much. Uh, and thank you everybody for joining us today. And uh, it's a pleasure to see you um, interested in our webinars. And we will have, you know, upcoming webinars and you will get emails from us uh, regarding those. Eli, do you want to say a few words before we finish? Well, really, thank you everyone for your attention for this, this past hour. And uh, namaste. Um, you can always find me on Instagram. If you have any personal question, you want some assistance over certain practice, you can find me on Instagram at Eli, Coach Eli AJ. But I'm also part of, if you follow Flow Coaching Institute, you're definitely going to find me somewhere in the feed and you're going to find my profile. So feel free to send me a message. And best of luck with your future mindfulness practice. And namaste. Namaste.